Welcome to part two of creating virtual hard disks. Now you're going to hear virtual hard disk or virtual hard drive out there in the real world. They mean the same things. You could even see that differing technology and terminology on the exam. So just kind of watch for that. Now what I want to do here in part two is show you how to use uh, the computer management tool, specifically the disk management tool, to create a virtual hard drive, mount it, and see it appear in the Windows Explorer. So these things aren't just for virtual machine use necessarily. So what I'm going to do here is I'll click the Windows key, and that'll take me out to my start screen in Windows Server 2012, and I'll open the Start Manager. Now once I get there, I'll go to the Tools menu and open Computer Management. And once Computer Management opens up, and I'll make that full screen so it doesn't look junky, I will go into Disk Management, and you will notice I have attached a 16 gig USB drive to the machine here, and I formatted it with NTFS. And so it's sitting out there, and I want to put a virtual hard disk on this particular drive. So what I'm going to do is go up here to Disk Management, left click on it, then I'll right click and choose Create VHD. Now it's asking me for the location, so I will browse out to my USB drive, the Kingston E drive, and we'll just call this Mark Class X for Mark Class Example, and this will be my virtual hard disk. And I'll hit Save, and it's going to ask me what type of format do you want, VHD or VHDX? VHDX is better as long as you don't need to use this virtual drive on an operating system earlier than Windows Server 2012. If you do, just leave it at VHD. Then I skip the size here. We'll make it uh, 325 megabytes. Then I can choose the hard disk type, fixed size or dynamic. I'm going to do dynamic because it's going to be quicker for this demo. But in a production environment, you would use fixed because you want to go ahead and set it out there, leave it. You don't want it dynamically expanding, running out of room, locking up, causing problems. And keep in mind, in the real world, we wouldn't be doing megabytes here, probably. We'd be looking at gigabytes or even terabytes. So I'm going to set this to dynamically expanding. Click OK. And just like that, notice there is 325 megabytes of unallocated space. Now, if I go out to Explorer at this point, you'll notice I don't see it. Why? It's unallocated. Uh, it's not been set up. So I will come out here, right click on disk 2 and initialize the disk. And I will set the uh, master boot record on there for my 325 megabytes. And just like that, it's done. Now I will right click this and I will add a simple volume onto there. And I'll just take the uh, default there. I'll sign in the drive letter of F. Click Next. It's going to format it with NTFS. And then click Finish. And it'll take it just a moment here to click and hum. And sometimes, and I'm not sure why, it's uh, going to throw an error and say that it can't do it, but it does. You probably won't see that, and I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. It's kind of the nature of IT, right? So notice now it says I have a new volume F. Now, if I go out to the Explorer, there is my new volume F. And notice it looks just like a disk out there. And uh, it has 292 megabytes of 321 megabytes free. So it looks like a disk. It acts like a disk. It feels like a disk. But it's actually a virtual hard disk. And so I can use them that way. Now what's cool about these things is out here on the disk itself, if I go on to the uh, actual Kingston disk, you can see there is that virtual file. Well, notice I can copy this thing and paste it and put it anywhere I would like. Also, let me show you, I can detach this. We'll talk about that in a minute in a separate video. And I can take this thing offline. And that starts to get kind of important a little bit later on with some other things we're going to talk about. And notice when I take it offline, it doesn't appear out here anymore. We can use that on the pass-through disks, and we'll talk about those later. But for now, pretty neat stuff there. That's a way to create a virtual hard disk, put it anywhere you want it, and use it just like a regular disk. So these things aren't just for virtual machines. Keep that in mind on the exam.